How's it going? A little late getting started, but you know, trying to get some reps in. <clears throat> Wait for a few people to get in here before we get started. Hopefully the picture's okay. It's not my um, laptop, but we'll make do. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and just start getting on my soapbox. Um, <clears throat> so I've re read a few comments on my page and um, basically people were just coming in saying, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right, or whatever. <clears throat> Same old story, right? Well, the thing is, is like, <clears throat> this stuff was created for real fighting. Um, Jeet Kune Do was made for self-defense or, <clears throat> as Jesse would like to put, self-preservation or the art of staying alive. I think those are the words he put in his book. Um, in saying that, so when Bruce came up with this whole martial art, um, it was a process of him starting with the martial art that he began in, which is Wing Chun. <clears throat> and... What happened was he got in a lot of trouble fighting and he had to move to the United States. He ended up staying with a family friend, Ruby Chow, and kind of worked there as low man on the totem pole, I think washing dishes and you know, just typical restaurant stuff. Well, he got a few friends and he started to train Jesse and his friends. And what ended up happening was he encountered more martial artists with different styles and he came across a karate guy who was offended by some of Bruce's claims because they would um, they would go do demonstrations um, just in various places around Seattle area and you know of course Bruce is brash and as proud as he is he said things that people didn't like so what happened was he um, ended up getting challenged by this karate man and I forget his name, but it's in Jesse's first book. And what happened was, Jesse was the timekeeper. He was like the referee. And um, actually, Ed Hart was the timekeeper. Jesse was the referee. And um, I think they agreed to like two or three minute, two, two or three two minute rounds. And of course, it didn't go that long. But um, what ended up happening was, right when it kicked off, the karate man threw a front kick to Bruce it's just like a straight kick and Bruce is in his typical Wing Chun posture and what ended up happening was he waited for the attack so the guy's um, leg kind of grazed like the front of his shirt and naturally Bruce um, kind of deflected it and then he came across the handball court with straight punches just straight punching him all the way across the handball court and um of course, you know, the speed and power of Bruce's punches are pretty serious, even in, I think it was 18 or 19. Um, right before he ended the series of combination of punches, he hit him with like a double punch, like a Mortal Kombat type punch. <laughs> so it was like, I guess in the head and like the body is the way Jesse described it. And the guy kind of flew backwards and he hit the wall. And I think he fell on his knees and hands and knees. And as his hands and knees hit the ground, Bruce kicked him right in the face. And that's when Jesse told him to stop. They like called off the match. So the result of the match was um, pretty decisive. I think Ed Hart doubled the time so the Japanese guy wouldn't feel too bad. Um, I think he said 22 seconds when it was really like 11. Um, but Bruce, uh, afterwards, he wasn't pretty very satisfied with his uh, result, even though he won. Um, because he knew that if the kick would have landed, he'd been in serious trouble. So he waited for the guy to attack, 
which is a pretty bad idea um, just regarding a real fight. You know, if you know nothing about your opponent and you have no idea how fast or how powerful he is or um, how skilled he is, you know, in terms of ex execution, um, it's probably not a good idea to wait for the person to attack um, because they could surprise you. They might not have any telegraph whatsoever. And if they hit you and they have no telegraph and they have really good attributes, speed, power, you name it, what's going to happen? You're going to be in a defensive uh, state of mind and they're going to have momentum. So <clears throat> that's when he began to um, kind of move away from static stuff, waiting for the attack so they could stick to him and turn him and punch him. So after that, that was like the start of his evolution, right? So he started in Wing Chun. He fights this guy from another style in um, karate. And, um, you know, it was kind of surprising to him. Well, that was just one encounter. Like, he had a few others. Another one was, uh, I talked about this before, uh, a Choi Lee Fuck guy. And so this guy, he throws punches, and they, they're like a spinning top. So his arms, so his arms are spinning around like this. So imagine trying to stick to a person. You're sticking to them to try to turn them or pull them off the line. While his arms are coming around like a spinning top. And according to Jesse... This guy could punch equally as fast as Bruce could um, in every direction. So it wasn't just like he was fast this way, just straight punches, right? He could punch in all directions, all the way around. And um, I think he got pretty close to being punched by this guy. And um, Bruce kind of thought about it like, I need to rethink what I'm doing because there's no way I can stick to his arm and manipulate his structure and turn him off the line to hit him because he's so fast. Um, so that gives you an idea like the result of his um, progression or evolution is not a result of I want this technique, this technique works for me, that technique works for me. It's not a result of that. It's a result of he realized what was dangerous and what wasn't. You know, standing still waiting for your opponent is very dangerous. Look at all the UFC and boxing fights. How many times do people get knocked out because the guy's plant, his feet are planted. He's just waiting for the attack, waiting to cover up. And the guy punches around the hole and hits him. It's just um, a bad plan, you know? So um, after that, he's like, okay, so I'm not going to wait to punch anymore. I'm not going to try to stick to the arms anymore. I'm just going to try to develop a knock up, knockout shot. And that's when he started looking into... Um, Jack Dempsey. So he wanted to develop a, like a knockout punch. Um, his brother Peter was also a fencer. So he's very skilled at fencing. So in fencing, on my last video, I talked about how you have to close the gap from the rear leg. So you push off the rear leg and then you reach out with your sword and you stab him <clears throat> from a distance. Um, with that said, um, he realized that two feet out from the, the opponent's front leg was safer than being in close. So he had to develop a lunge with the mechanics that he learned from um, Jack Dempsey's book. I think he actually wrote Jack Dempsey a letter, and he wanted like a signed autograph for him and um, his son Brandon. Um, I think that's how the story goes. But um, so he got into uh, mechanics, the falling steps. So your weight falls into the target, turning your hips, so your shoulders turn. You get all your weight into the target. All these things he started adding up into his Wing Chun vertical punch. So the punch is like this, so you get the power line, right? You get the power line, your arm all the way comes all the way down, you turn your shoulders, and then your weight falls into the target. <clears throat> and you do this from a distance, because again, if you're too close, the guy can get you first, so you don't wait for the attack. Um, so this is like a progression, right? And um, say, in saying all this, again, it's not, he picked this technique from this place, this kick looks pretty good here. I'm going to try this. It wasn't that type of idea. Um, it was just a result of the things that he encountered training against or with other people. And um, the next step, I think he went to a demonstration. And I think the karate guy's name is a different karate guy. His name was uh, Nishiyama. And he had incredible um, dexterity and control and coordination of his feet. He could kick in all directions, and um, he had uh, really good flexibility, and Bruce was very impressed by him. And I think Jesse said that um, that night when um, 
they left the demonstration, it was all he could talk about. Like that's all he was talking about was developing the same kind of control in his legs that he had in his hands and his arms. Um, that way he had more options for attacking, right? And the leg is longer, so, you know, safer. <clears throat> so he started stretching his legs and working the double front kick, um, just practicing relentlessly, you know, trying to get his legs up to par with his hands. And I think Jesse said at the end of his life, his, his legs still were never as good as his hands. His real killing, like, weapon was like his fist, his uh, lead hand. Uh, just because he had so many reps and he had that foundation of practicing with that hand. But um, in saying that, what this became was not like, um, I'm going to punch you this way or I'm going to kick you this way. It became um, treating your arms and legs like weapons. And I think he came up with the uh, idea of a progressive weapons chart because of this. So if you stretch your arm out, Right, and your arm goes out as this far, thus far. That's the end of the length of your arm. <clears throat> so that dictates how far away or what um, target you're going to attack. If the guy's closer, if he's in this distance here, you wouldn't use you wouldn't use this attack, right? You'd use this attack because it's closer. So that's where it came up with longest weapon nearest target. It, it was a, a progression of. I need to get to these targets to end the, the confrontation fast. It wasn't, you know, I need to counter this attack with this attack or counter this technique with this technique because then you're playing a long-winded affair of just tying yourself up. You're not going to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is getting to the target faster than the other person. And how do you do that? You use your longest weapon against the nearest target. And you don't wait. You don't wait to attack. So when people are talking about sparring on my channel, you're waiting to attack, you're waiting to counter and attack the other person. You're training your nervous system to trade blows with someone. <clears throat> That's not what you should be doing. Yes, you break things down individually. You, you, um, you break down your defensive tactics, you break down your attacks and your methods of attack. So direct and indirect. And you have, um, Tommy's taught us like various ways of doing this. You know, you have, um, I think it's called pace, force, and fraud. And those are like three concepts that he used to attack. So pace is like where you change your rhythm. <clears throat> so if you're moving and you're moving at a certain speed and then you change speed and then all of a sudden you hit them, that's your pace, right? And then the next one would be like a fainting. So if I faint low and then hit high, et cetera, et cetera. And then force is where you come in and you force yourself to turn them off center and then hit them, right? <clears throat> so those are the... Basically, like the three ways you can get in on someone. And you use your, again, longest weapon nearest target or closest weapon to closest target. That way you don't have to think about it because if you've done your repetitions, if you've done enough straight punches, and again, as I've said before, you don't always have to punch this way, this way, this way, this way, even this way. Those are all variations of this distance, right? So you have all the variations of your palm based on whatever hole he provides. And if you've done the reps, whenever the opportunity or the hole is presented, then you fill the hole. You don't have to think about technique one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what people don't understand about the stuff that we do. It's not about, I need to pick up Muay Thai or Savat or all these other things. If you've trained your body mechanics, so your weight is going to the target, you eliminate wasted motion, right? and you remove your hesitation to attack, as soon as you see the intent, you go right to the target. You train in this manner, and it, then you won't be, have to be concerned like, so maybe my weakness is against this or this or this, this style, because you're training against a human. You're not training against a certain style, and that's what people miss in the whole thing. They don't really understand. Um, let's see, I got a question here. Which of the Jeet Kune Do masters do you think Tommy is close to? I mean, skills. Uh, close to? Like, um, in terms of, like, his ability or teaching ability? I really, to be honest, I haven't done a, lot, a whole lot of research on recent people, so I can't give you an honest, fair assessment in that. I know there are people that move pretty well. A lot of Taiwan guys, 
they have pretty good movement. There are, there are things that, you know, that they do that we don't. And that's nothing against them. That's just the way they, they do things. Um, but I'm just trying to lay out the way we do things the way we do. And basically, Bruce Lee's martial art, again, as people said, it's just a philosophy. It's not really a philosophy. It's a, more a set of principles. And in saying that, it's a set of principles in the aspect of you should be constantly con trying to do more with less. You should try to be getting away with however much you can get away with. How much do you need? So it's like a series of questions that you ask yourself. Do I really need to do that? I probably shouldn't do that. Should I really hit him here when I could hit him here? Why did I do that? Why did I try to, why did I try to make that technique work? That's the key thing. Because people try to do things and they try to make a technique work. It's not about trying to make a technique work. He makes it work by being at the right distance at the right time. Because if, for example, if I go to throw a punch and the guy's moving away from me and I should have kicked him, I'm trying to make this work. And it, it's not going to work because he's too far away. You know? Um, that's just an example, though. Like, I could give you endless examples of things that I see people do. And they're kind of like sweeps, for example, or throws. They're incidental. They're accidental. They're just, um, they happen to be at the right place or you could just take his balance and turn him off the center and make him fall. It's not, it's not like you're, um, all right, so whenever he gets this close, I'm going to try to make this work. That's not how you do it. You have to, when people come to my channel and they say, okay, <clears throat> you need to be sparring this person, this person, this person doing this and that. Some guy made a comment earlier in French on one of my posts, and um, he's telling me I need to be sparring against certain people. And I get what he's saying. Like, yeah, you need to make contact. I need to be sharp through your contact of pressure testing. That's obvious, right? That's the obvious thing. But you don't train yourself to trade back and forth and try to make a technique work within those constraints. Because as soon as you put rules or regulations or a certain way of doing things, that's how you're going to fight. Because you're training your nervous system to do that. So I don't do that. I put a head guard on and it has a fencing mask or I make them wear goggles. And then I put a groin guard on and then they put shin and knee guards on. And then sometimes I'll make them wear like a body protector if I'm, if I'm going to try to hit them to the body pretty decisively. So that tells you the targets that I'm going to train, train against. And we break things down. So like if you want to get better at straight punches, you don't just sit there and um, try to straight punch an opponent right away without breaking things down in isolation to where it makes sense. You wouldn't be in close quarters position trying to make a straight punch land, would you? No, because it's the wrong distance. And I'm not saying that you can't make a straight punch land in that position. That's not the point. The point is, is like you're not, you're not trying to execute something under the wrong conditions. You isolate things to see where you can make them work and what times and how far away and what direct ways and indirect ways you can land it. Then you say, okay, you attack me with any punch or any kick, and then I'm going to try to make this work. Yeah, you can include other things or you can break it down. But anyway, <laughs> sorry about the soapbox, but people just, they don't understand where, um, where we come from. And again, it's um, non-classical, right? So it has to work from a natural position. I can't always be in an on-guard position. If this is real for real fighting or for self-defense, you're not always going to be in this position here or this position. You're not always going to be in that. Sometimes you'll have your hands crossed and there'll be a person coming up next to you. And you can tell that they're already getting ready to start. So you attack from where you are. You don't, you don't wait. Because remember the karate man. If you wait, that's it. Anyway. <clears throat> Do we have any questions here? Um, I got about 30 minutes, so. Watch my last community post and tell the guys the answer. <laughs> Thomas, why are you trying to get me in trouble, man? <laughs> tell them the answer. Um, oh, the you're talking about the, um, was it the pack style, bong style, lop style? Trying to execute it against... Punching. Real punches. See, here's the thing here. <clears throat> this is the thing, okay? I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. 
And I'm not trying to say I know it all or any of these things or whatever, right? This is the thing. Bruce was trying to kill sacred cows. What does that mean? He was trying to do away with the classical mess. You use your body to the utmost, but you have to use a degree of common sense. You have to have a little bit of nuance. You can't just, I'm not going to call out anybody's techniques here or how, however they practice. I'm not going to call anything out. But the point is, it's not to accumulate techniques in terms of learning as many as you can. If you like doing that, fair enough. But if you're trying to make this work as the intention is, scientific street fighting, as he called it, right? The point is, is not to accumulate. The point is, is to make a few things very, very sharp that you can use in just about any situation. And because you know the variation so well, you can make it fit in other situations. You know? <clears throat> Um, he was trying to eliminate all that. And here we are in 2024, and people are still trying to add on. Again, I have no problem with people training whatever. I don't care if you train dancing or pole dancing. I don't really care. Like, it doesn't bother me. But if you're wondering why you don't have Bruce Lee-type skills or abilities or attributes, it's because you're not training the way he trained. And... I try to say this to people because they just don't know because um, a good bit of nuggets you have to get from someone like Tommy or from a good resource like Jesse Glover's books because they tell it like it is. There's no, there's no hidden um, underlying secretive motive. They're just trying to tell you the way it works for real. And the point is, is like you try to end it fast as possible. That's, that's the whole thing. That you get from A to B as quick as you can. Because it doesn't really matter like what technique it is. Like it doesn't, you don't have to give it a name. Um, what was the clip that, um, I think it was David. He's one of um, Tommy's friends on Facebook. And um, he's really into boxing. Like he trains guys in boxing. But it was a clip about Anthony Joshua. And Anthony Joshua, uh, I think, uh, was it Anthony Joshua? No, 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 no. It was, um, oh, what's his name? Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno. <laughs> he said that there was this tough guy in his area um, somewhere in Britain. And uh, he was a very, very tough guy, right? But he only had one eye. <laughs> and he goes, well, what would you do? And Frank goes, I'd poke you in the other eye. It wasn't like, you know, I'm going to box you up and try to out-tough man you. Like... <laughs> Obviously, that's not a good idea. He's like, I'm going to poke you in the eye. <laughs> but it just goes to show you, like, people understand reality if, when they want to, you know. It's just people that have, um, like, a preference or attachment to things. And that's what Bruce was trying to get rid of. That's the irony about this whole thing. <clears throat> JQD developed further after Bruce. Okay, but who did develop it? Man, the commercialism of MMA and UFC, I get it, like, it's fun to watch, you know, when it's exciting. When the, the action is not halted, um, I get it. And people think it went further because it's just more recent. If things take longer to happen, like, <laughs> if the result takes longer, no, man. You're going backwards. <laughs> and they could say that the other person has just as much skill. Well, if that's true... Are they practicing the same things that you are? You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, do I have any stories to share about Tommy's experience as a bouncer? I think Thomas would probably have more than I would. I remember he's he's been in a few altercations. I think he said that he's knocked a guy out with a hook kick to the head. Um, back fist. I think he's kicked a guy and broke his ribs, like with a hook kick. What else? Yeah, I don't think he's eye jabbed anybody, of course. If you've seen his fingers, if you've seen Tommy, if you really look at his hands, like I have larger hands than him, but his fingers are like almost like a half inch thicker than mine. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, if one of those go in my eye, that's it, man. He's gonna like tickle my brain, you know? But <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> um, he said that uh, 
he was in a really bad like circumstance where he decided like I don't want to do this anymore because um, it's really not safe. And I think it was just a, a group of people. I don't know remember the exact details, but it was like um, maybe there was knives involved or something. But he was like it was like in a group of people, and he was like one of the only people fighting against them. Yeah, yeah, no eye jab or sidekick to knee. I think he's used all of them. <clears throat> Backfist, I think, is one of his favorites. Backfist and the hook kick. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine uh, that being your job? <laughs> doing Jeet Kune Do? <laughs> like, actually doing it to people? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think, Anthony, um, it's probably not a good idea to eye jab people as a bouncer. I don't know if people would want to come back to the bar. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll buy two drinks if that guy doesn't eye jab me. <laughs> and he's just like a quiet guy sitting up against the wall like this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. That was many years ago, though. But um, he sidekick a da guy downstairs? Oh, my God. <laughs> Thomas, when I saw Martin in... Um, New York, <clears throat> when they had the uh, Leo Fong and Richard Torres seminar, he um, he told me he's like, yeah, Thomas, he's he's done, he's been in a few altercations, like he's been in a lot of situations, <laughs> but you know, it's the type of thing where you have to grow up and um, you realize it's really just not safe, you know, so, but <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. It's really just um, try to get home safe. That's um, a lot of people. They say, okay, well, yeah, you can't eye jab or sidekick someone to the knee if you have to restrain them, like if they're a family member. Yeah, you have to. Again, you have to use nuance. You know, <clears throat> um, hit them to the stomach or body or the groin, <clears throat> something that incapacitate them. You know, um, but not hurt them seriously so people try to use uh, justification for doing this or that and you have to ask yourself you know should I be fighting these people at this point probably not you have to know when to fight when not to um, but I can't imagine being a bouncer man Hi, hey John. Is Art of Expressing the Human Body by John Little a good book for a physical training? It is a good start, and that's actually how I got into all this stuff. Um, I have an um, interview or a podcast coming out um, probably in the next few days with uh, Vincent Benitez. Um, he's a friend of mine in New Jersey. Um, but we kind of go over just like my background and... Um, the things that introduced me to Bruce and like, his martial art and his training. And we kind of talk about that book a little bit. Um, but in the book, it gives you a layout of like the different stages that he went through to develop himself. You know, I think um, it has like a section on isometrics where he uses the rack and then the bar at different heights. Um, it has like um, his overall lifting routine which he uses like clean and press, um, deadlift, squats, pullovers, just like whole body stuff. And you can see in the book that it was more, um, as far as strength training goes, I think that's the majority of the book. Um, he used a lot of compound movements. So he used deadlift, bench, squat, all the things that were going to train multiple muscle groups at once because he wanted everything to be balanced. He did not want to sacrifice any agility whatsoever or speed. Everything was geared towards speed. So if you read that book, it'll give you a really good, solid foundation. And this is something I talked about in the interview with um, Vincent. If you want to be in Jeet Kune Do, you really need to understand the human body. And I, I suggest people that do JKD or teach people in JKD to try to get a really good background in training people in physical training. Um, because if you can get people up to par physically, they're more likely to want to train with you. Um, that's kind of what I've done with my business. And it's just um, a process over the years of me trying to figure this stuff out, you know. So, Tommy has developed JKD more than anyone else since. Yeah, he, he's lived it. Like, 
He made JKD his job for seven years as a bouncer, you know, in Glasgow. Because at the time, I think it was like the murder capital of Europe. Um, and the thing to consider is like guns there were um, banned. So you couldn't just go around shooting people like here in the USA. Um, so you had to pull out a knife or some kind of weapon. Not saying people didn't have guns. I don't really know. But it's less likely to be shot. So you have to use your hands and feet, you know. Um, let's see. Yes, he's also one of the guys that really understand Bruce's ideas. Yeah, it's because he actually wanted his skill. Like, he didn't care. If you watch any of Tommy's interviews on YouTube, the ones he talks about where he was younger, <clears throat> when he was a kid, he talked about how he would practice that much that he would pass out, and his mom was really worried about him. His mother was, um, I think she took him to the doctor. And um, they try to figure out, and they're like, he's just healthy. Like, <laughs> he's just crazy about martial arts. <laughs> but it just goes to show you, like, how far he went to, um, you know, figure it out and get some kind of skill. So, let's see. Starting Strength, yes, very good book. Uh, Mark Ripito and Alan Thrall are, like, one of my main sources when I first started lifting. Those are my main sources of trying to figure out how to lift weights in a safe manner. Um, really take their advice seriously um, if you want to figure out how to lift. <clears throat> and then, once you do that, um, if you are looking for people to train with in JKD, you should probably get some kind of personal training certificate. A legit one, you know. I'm not saying, like, just an internet one. But get a legit one, and then you can... Tell people, like, hey, I know how to lift weights. I know how to do this or that or whatever. I also do martial arts. That's kind of how, like, I um, approach people. <clears throat> and then I'd show them what I do, and they're like, okay, forget all this other shit. <laughs> I want to do this. But naturally, in JKD, it's just a lot of repetitions of the same thing. So, but anyway, let's see. Yeah, Glasgow is very rough. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stabbings. Um, I forget who it was that was telling me, yeah, it was the capital when it comes to knife stabbing. I was, somebody was telling me, like, you'd see people with, like, scars all over their face from, like, knife fights. What's up, Axel? <clears throat> I got about, I think, 20 more minutes. I have to go uh, train some people at the gym. So I just wanted to do a little stream going over these things. Walking a dog in the rain, getting a cardio. That's what I'm talking about. Axel, what kind of dog do you have? Is he a big dog or one of those, um, one of those, like, handheld dogs, micro dogs? I plan to, um, do, like, a screen share and go over one of my clips and kind of talk about, like, what I'm doing. Um, but me and these technological advances <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out I've almost got it figured out so I'll probably do it on the next one but I kind of ran out of time between cooking and training and all these other things Shih Tzu nice yeah I'll check out your post Thomas he's 13 holy smokes that sucker's old <clears throat> you better take care of that dog 13 years old, walking in the rain. Dedication, man. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm just making sure no one's wanting my attention. Barney, who is a rescue, he's a Shih Tzu mixed with a terrier. Holy cow. How many pounds is that? 11 kilos? What is that? Like 24 pounds, something like that. That sucker's heavy. Yeah, my German Shepherd, he's like 85 pounds. So, and he lets me like cradle him, like carry him like a baby. <laughs> he's kind of crazy though. He's mad at me because I have him over in his kennel. He was bad earlier. 23 pounds? Holy crap. That sucker's heavy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to um, 
go over a few things regarding like um, some guy was trying to give me like tips on how to throw a hook <clears throat> and basically what I was saying is like when I throw the hook I keep the elbow down and that's just so people can't bob and weave underneath it like you can't you can't get it if your elbow is down like this and you're hooking the chin it's hard to bob and weave underneath it that's just like um, one of the things that Tommy's taught us because a lot of people when they hook they have this big massive gapping hole right here which you know economically is bad but there are some instances where you could land this one this one makes more sense structurally and safety wise after the fact so when you throw the hook your forearms in the way and it, it protects you right but again people don't really know because they don't know what we're doing and how we intend to be safe we use proper body mechanics <clears throat> Do you have any updates on Tommy's book? He said it's off uh, at the press. Um, I think they're getting ready to print it. But he's been telling me he's been having car issues. So he hasn't been able to get around and do all the errands that he normally does. He kind of runs his own, like the whole ship himself. Um, he teaches at his school. I think he has several classes. He has kids classes. And then he has um, like one-on-one -on -one training, like personal training. And then, um, you know, he has his own training. And then he cooks all his meals. <laughs> he does it all himself, you know. And then um, for the orders, like if you buy equipment from him or uh, this or that, he does all that himself. So he has to go to the post office, bring all the stuff, get it from the manufacturer, deliver it. So, um, but his car is out of commission from what I understand. And um, he's having issues with that. But um, it's supposed to be uh, pretty much done from what I understand. Someone teaching White Tyson how to punch. Crazy. <laughs> White Tyson. You guys have gone too far with this White Tyson stuff, man. <laughs> White Tyson. Tommy's book in an instant. Definitely, man. That'd be an instant classic, wouldn't it? 50 years of martial arts. Relentless. Like, really training and teaching for 50 years. Yeah, you might want to buy that one. Sometimes I wish someone would be like, right, we're going to see Tommy. That's it. Drive me there. <laughs> what do you mean? Actually, you just do it, man. Don't overthink it. Just do it. You'll feel better about it. Or more like even just training with you guys, like if I was picked up and I have to go. Dude, just go. How far are you from Tommy? If you're close, you should go. You're a lot closer than I am, I bet. I'm like 5,000 miles away. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm just glad Tommy around to keep Bruce Legacy of alive. Me too, man. I wouldn't be here right now um, doing the things that I'm doing. God, who knows what I'd be doing? I'd probably be doing like MMA or something. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not what I want to do, you know? Um, God. I can't even, I don't even want to think about that. What would I be doing? Eight hours? Have you ever rode a train for eight hours? It sounds miserable. I don't know. I mean, if you really, if you, if you really want to train. My um, flight, so the first time I went, I went in 2010. And the first flight that I had was an hour and a half. I think I went to South Carolina and then a connecting flight to Philadelphia, which is another hour. There's probably an hour layover in between. And then from Philadelphia to like Amsterdam or London Heathrow, I can't remember. That was eight hours. And then another hour flight from either Amsterdam or London Heathrow to Glasgow. So it's like 20 hours of traveling. It's like a whole day of traveling. It's miserable. It's terrible. Yeah, I would do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I understand the moves. I understand all the techniques and under the control and um, the sensitivity and no gi and gi. I understand it all. I've trained in a little bit, but it's not somewhere I'd want to be. <clears throat> Once I went up to Newcastle very bad, put me off to the night. 
The Rocky Steps, where's that? Same me, watching Tommy and you guys, a lot of things clicked. I noticed about Bruce over the years. Yeah, man, we're just trying to get the truth out there. It's not like, um, I don't know. We don't have this huge like corporate federation making tons of money, like a Wing Chun federation. Me and Thomas probably should have done that, though we didn't. I've got my contract with my company. I may soon stop teaching, which will mean also no more YouTube videos. Maybe you can push it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, again, I, I don't want any put off anything between me and Tommy. Like, I'm not trying to take his life's work and take it as mine and try to claim uh, ownership to it, you know? If I put anything out there, it'd be my strength training stuff, you know, the stuff that I understand that improve your attributes. And some of it I've learned from him. So I don't know. I like, I like sharing stuff. I like teaching people. I like showing people things that work um, in a short amount of time. So... John, have you been in any real life altercations? Any stories to share? Uh, before I was into JKD with Tommy, I've been in a few. Um, one time I got jumped by like three or four people when I was pretty young. And that really set off the whole, um, I guess, process of wanting to learn how to defend myself, not wanting to be um, a target. Um, and it was just like a school altercation thing. And then after that, Nothing really serious. People I didn't know, like, it was like, I guess you could say like a hard sparring type thing where people are trying to punch your head off because you don't know them. I've had a few of those. And then um, the most recent one I had was just like a, me and this uh, <laughs> ex-football player. He weighed about 230, 235. Um, Bald-headed guy. And... Um, he tried to take me down, and I just, I threw an inverted kick right at his nuts. I just hit him right in the nuts, <laughs> and he falls over, and he's just like, oh, I'm like, I thought you were going to take me down. I'm like, what happened here? <laughs> but, you know, nothing more than that. Uh, we became friends afterwards, actually, and I kind of explained to him, like, what I do and stuff. He's like, I'm not fucking you anymore. <laughs> but other than that, I don't go any places where I'm likely to get in any trouble or harm or put my family in harm. Because a lot of times I have um, my son with me or my fiance, and they're very small people. And um, I don't want to have to try to protect them and fight someone at the same time. So I don't really go to places where I'm likely to be in a bad situation. Because protecting someone and then fighting just for yourself is two different things. It's not, not ideal, man. <clears throat> Philadelphia, you know, museum. Oh, Axel, I was just there for um, like a layover for like an hour. Somerset in the UK, I realized the online lessons aren't. No, he didn't message me, Axel. No. <clears throat> no. I'm actually um, going to the gym in a little bit, and there's a guy there who was in the military, and he practices with Muay Thai guys, a guy that used to do some boxing, and um, I think he was like a black belt in Taekwondo. So I might ask them if um, they want to hold some focus mitts or do some uh, drills or something just to get some people to practice with in this new area. So, Thomas, you really make groovy. It'd be a shame if you stopped. I understand. If it doesn't help to understand you. Yeah. I agree, Axel. <clears throat> Thomas, if anything, you should just make a clip whenever you get free time, you know? Yeah, I know, Axel. I'll talk. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, it'd be a shame if you did stop, Thomas, because you probably um, brought a lot of people to IFO. Um, people that didn't have any idea of what a uh, real JKD is in terms of application, making it work for real. It's one thing to um, try to execute things in a manner where like, oh, I'm doing Bruce Lee stuff, right? And then it's another thing to try to punch someone from no stance, from no, from, from a, like a, a distance without them being able to stop you. 
That's a, that's a totally different thing, right? Because then you're like, well, fuck, how do I get from A to B? And you have to be taught. And um, you have to do a lot of reps in order to make it work. Yeah. That's right, Thomas. There you go. There you have it. Anthony says it. It is through Thomas' videos that I know about Tommy. There you go. There you have it. Pretty good advertisement to me. That's a testimonial. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright guys, I got about maybe five, ten more minutes. If I close the class, I'll lose the place, so hard to do some good clips in a small room. It'll kill the channel anyway. Um You don't you don't have to have that place, I don't think. Are you not gonna train with your guys anymore? Or uh Fabian? You gonna stop training altogether? Cause if you could still train, I mean I mean look at my clips. My <laughs> They're the most like ghetto bobo clips of all time. I don't care. The point is, is the material. I remember when you used to do uh, parking garages. That was cool. That's where I got the idea to take my guys there and shoot some clips. Parking garage. <clears throat> yes, Axel, I'll make you the clip, man. I just haven't seen Keon in like a month because I'm in a new area. Oh, you're just going to stop teaching. Okay. That's fine. You should, um, is, um, your senior guy, uh, Fabian, is he, um, a group leader? Or is he able to be a group leader? Because then he could run the group for you. Like, he could, he's not an instructor, but he could be a group leader for you. And he could just run the, the group. I mean, I don't know if he wants that responsibility, but it wouldn't have to be as formal. <clears throat> he could just run a group and do all the drills and keep it going, you know? Yeah, I agree. It could still be presented. The important thing is to get the message across. I mean, I'm not trying to dissuade you either way, but just something to consider. <clears throat> be a shame. Because you're um, one of the last of the Mohicans. He's not interested. <laughs> he sees all the shit you go through. <laughs> it's a lot, man. In your garden. JKD TV coming at you live from my garden. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. I'm going to be the last one. Jeez. Yeah, he has, he has given a lot of JKD out. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Did I... Did you say take MNM? What is that? Is that um that supplement? It's like a niacin type supplement. I just take a niacin. JKD TV shirts. Yeah. We're gonna release those in White Tyson. <laughs> Stupid. I gotta do some more training. Did some uh, close quarters work earlier. I think I injured a tendon in my right leg. It's been pretty sore. Oh, NAD plus. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've taken it before. I just don't have any now. But I just take niacin because that shit gets really expensive. NAD plus, and it's how much more in, like better? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I might get sued. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, if you guys have any uh, last questions before I close up shop here, I'm going to leave this stream up, I think. I took the other ones down just because um, there's stuff on there that probably shouldn't be just left out that I've been taught and um i want you guys to get it when you're here like watching um supporting me um but i don't want to give it to people that probably don't care for us and take credit for it i don't even know i just know people are saying results and studies pretty good oh yeah definitely yeah yeah but again if um if you can't afford it just get niacin niacin and um 
NAC is another good one. Um, what else? Black seed oil. I don't know if you've heard of black seed oil. Black seed oil is amazing, man. I knocked out COVID probably a couple times with that one. Niacin, black seed oil, and then melatonin. I think I took those three. And it knocked out COVID in like a few days. That's not a doctor's recommendation for me, but that's just what I did for myself doing my own research. So I'm not trying to screw any of you guys up here. <clears throat> I wonder if I'll get um, flagged for saying that. I'll look into niacin. and haven't really checked. Yeah, it's a vasodilator. The flushing effect is what really like cleanses your blood. You want the flushing kind. You don't want the no flush. No, no flush, no good. Omegas, I get it mostly from fish because my fiance, she's Filipino. And so they like to eat a lot of fish. So we eat a lot of sushi. Um, maybe once a week, once every other week. But I do take a Omega capsule uh, when I have them. And they just come in like a, a vitamin pack that I buy. It's uh, GNC's, I think, Mega Man Performance and Vitality, I think is the name of it. But um, it comes with an Omega pill. And... Uh, it's pretty good. Drinking blood. I don't know about that. I don't think it would taste the best. Take taste kind of irony. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, I don't know about drinking blood. I haven't tried it. From what I understand, I think Bruce he did like ox blood or something like that. I don't know. Um, I know he did. Um, he, he blended his steaks, like he'd put his steaks in a, blend, a blender and drink it. So, take that with what you will. There's probably ways that you can do that kind of thing, but you really need to know what you're doing, you know? If you're just trying to do stuff because you think it's this or that, like, you haven't done enough time reading or researching to try to make those kind of decisions. Um, the things that I have my clients do, like intermittent fasting, all these things, I've done it myself for a long time. So, Blood doping was big in his day? Yeah. Yeah, and stopped pretty quickly when one of his friends said it was safe. It wasn't safe, Bruce. <laughs> I'm sure Bruce did a lot of things that weren't safe. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna... Um, take like 50 vitamins at one time <laughs> yeah <clears throat> it's not safe are you sure <laughs> I don't know I feel pretty good <laughs> yeah he was uh, he was kind of known for pushing the envelope you know and things if he figured out how that something did something like he was going to He's going to do three times the servings, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> but I guess that's the, what does the saying, the saying go? No risk, no reward. So you have to, again, use nuance. Please use nuance. If you can't use nuance, I don't know what to say. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. i got to get ready to train two of my guys to this evening at this CrossFit gym. Um, they're coming along pretty good. Hopefully, I'll get – if I can get maybe four or five more, i got an attorney starting next week. Um, she says she has a big case this week, so we have to start next week. But if I can get four or five more, I can probably stream more often <clears throat> and post more of my training more often. And um, do like tutorials and I don't know, Q&A type stuff. So <clears throat> anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, Thomas, thanks for coming, man. Please don't give up the dream. Um, I'll probably be back on, what's today, Wednesday? Oof. I might post another clip next few days, but I'll probably stream again next week. So Monday or Tuesday. I'll check it out, Thomas. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. I'm going to try to figure out how to stop the stream. <laughs> I'm still learning all this stuff. I'll see you guys soon.